Africa. For me, it's the most inspiring and the most challenging place on Earth. I'm setting off on the journey of a lifetime across the continent. I'm going to get up close to Africa's most fascinating animals, some of them endangered, others all too dangerous. Up, everybody, up. And I'm going to explore how man lives alongside the wild animals of Africa. Careful, careful, be careful, careful. please. It's a journey that'll take me coast to coast from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic, past some breathtaking scenery, and I'll get a stunning and absolutely unique view of the landscape and of the wildlife because I'm going to be traveling by balloon. But it's not all plain sailing. I'll experience everything from crash landings. Okay, and we'll stop. <laughs> a close encounter with a vulture, hunting crocodiles, and tracking wild elephants as I explore the fragile relationship between Africa's animals and its people. After four years playing a vet in South Africa in Wild at Heart, I've fallen in love with the continent and its wildlife and can't wait to get going on my balloon adventure. The inspiration for our journey was Jules Verne's amazing account of a balloon safari across Africa in his first book, Five Weeks in a Balloon. But that was only a work of fiction. We're doing it for real. Along with me in the balloon basket is pilot Robin Batchelor. I couldn't be in better hands. He's flown in more than 30 countries and is expert at ballooning under African skies. When the balloon shadow meets the basket, then that means we've landed. Useful tips. My journey begins in Tanzania on Africa's east coast, where I'll test my veterinary expertise with some of the hardest working vets in the world. Yes. Careful, careful. Yes. Yeah, you. And I'll have a close encounter with one of the planet's most endangered species. That was the closest I've ever been to a gorilla. But my first flight is in search of elephants on the edge of the Ngorongoro crater in northern Tanzania a sanctuary to 25,000 wild animals. Good morning from Nai Noka Noka. It's uh, about 10 to 7 in the morning. We've been up since 5, and so we're getting ready for the real thing now. As you can see, we have some Maasai on the pitch. They think it's all over, but it's not quite. So uh, I'd better get back to it. It looks like I'm skiving. We've christened our balloon Daisy after my daughter. Ah. To the basket, men. You have to get up early if you want to balloon in Africa, because by eight o'clock it's already too hot to fly. Once we take off, we're in the hands of Mother Nature. You can't steer a balloon, so the wind will take us where it wants. Fingers crossed to the elephants. Good. One more burn. Hands off. Hello down below. The school's come out to see us. It's the only way to travel. We're leaving the village now and drifting over the Leani forest. 
We're several thousand feet above sea level here and the crater is surrounded by wide open plains and thick, dense forest. The forest acts as a natural sanctuary for wild animals and even the local Maasai move warily through it because of the numbers of buffalo and elephant. It looks like the world's biggest broccoli farm. Elephant. Elephant? Right Elephant beneath. right beneath us. Right below us ahead. There's a whole herd. Listen to that. There's loads of them. That's fantastic. All you can hear is like the splintering of trees as they... Well, that's easy for you to say. Wow. About 30 of them, I think. Led by the matriarch, there's babies with them as well. It was the mothers in the herd making the most noise, warning us to stay away from their babies. We would never have got so close to them on the ground. Finding the elephants is fantastic, but in all the excitement, we don't notice that we've been blown seriously off course. That first line of trees, that, that's, that's the crater. Edge. Yes, at, at, the, at the edge of these trees. OK, we've got to be down before then. And it's trees all the way. <laughs> OK, we've just got to get some left. We need to get a bit of left. I'll start blowing. This is really bad news. The balloon is now heading straight for the crater. It's a strict government no-fly zone. Land in the wrong place and the balloon will be confiscated after our first flight. But Catch-22... There's nowhere else safe to land. It looks like we'll have to try a crash landing in the trees. That alone is tricky enough, but the area's full of highly dangerous buffalo. Not to mention the herd of elephants heading our way. We're desperately looking for an escape route when Robin thinks he spots a landing site. I think I'm going to land in this clearing ahead. Mm -hmm. It's about the only clearing we've got before the Ungura Ungura crater. But as we get closer, what looked like a clearing turns out to be full of six-foot-high thorn bushes that could rip through our balloon canopy. It's a balloonist's nightmare, but we don't have a choice. Yeah, that just breaks. And that's how we do that. An eye on any foliage coming into the park. Yeah. Hmm, eucalyptus. I hmm. always say that when I land in the balloon. <laughs> it will be our catchword from now on. <laughs> A safe landing, we all say eucalyptus. Well, we've done it. <laughs> Been unorthodox. We're not in the clear yet. We're marooned miles from our retrieval team, and by the sound of it, the elephants we saw earlier are still close by. So the balloon's emptying. Stephen is gallantly holding the balloon so it doesn't come down on the hot burner. So then we'll <laughs> try and think how to get out of this um, beautiful landing spot and get back to the, to the road. All we need now is that herd of elephants. Robin manages to contact our support team, but there's bad news. They won't reach us for many hours, and we've got company. Good, all understood. We'll stand by here. Thank you. Over. Stephen, they did make a poignant reminder that we stay with the basket. Um, apparently there are elephants in the area. With the crew still miles away, Robin and I are struggling, but then we have a huge stroke of luck. Out of the forest appear a passing group of Maasai who saw our crash landing and have come to investigate. Jumbo! Hi. Jumbo! Jumbo, my friend! Oh, we're very happy to see you! And in no time at all, Robin recruits a new balloon crew. Um, is it possible we just finished putting the big red balloony okay. in the bag? So we're going to fold it yeah. Yeah. into the middle so it's a long sausage. Okay. And then we put it in a bag. Yeah. Great! This won't take long. Yeah. 
It seems to be working, despite Robin's uh, limited grasp of Swahili. Yeah, lifty, lifty, big red balloony. Good. Yeah. Robin's way of communicating is to add an e onto the end of words. Well, he's... Balloony and lifty. <laughs> well, he's it's the... working. We're in the forest, Lifty. That's good. <laughs> Word gets out and attracts curious villagers from miles around, and Robin feels duty bound to lay on a little musical entertainment. <laughs> Sun's definitely got to Robin. Fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, to stop Robin's whistling, our new friends volunteer to carry our kit down the mountain and back to where we think our retrieval team are. The balloon basket and gas canisters are very heavy and the road is a long, long way away. But these warriors are seriously tough. On the way back down, I was asked to demonstrate my spear-throwing skills. Oh! Yep. That's how it should be done. Good grouping. They've had more practice than me, that's all it is. Oh. After an heroic effort on the part of the local Maasai, Pilot and Balloon are once more reunited. Well done, lads. Balloon, the burner, the tanks and the basket. Full house. We live to fight another fly, another day. <laughs> it was just incredibly exciting to see this herd of elephants just tramping through that magnificent forest over there. And it almost felt like a, a perfect day. The Maasai arrived en masse and they were spectacular. It was a privilege to, to meet them all. Yeah, the first, I hope, of many memories that I'll never forget. Bravo, warriors, warriors, all of you. My next stop is the Serengeti National Park in northern Tanzania, one of the most important game parks in the world. With an estimated four million animals in its grounds, it is the size of Northern Ireland. The local Maasai call it the place where the land moves on forever. I'm going to see how vets in the Serengeti cope with this enormous task. It's a big job for any team of vets, but a gargantuan one when you find out that the team of vets here numbers only two. Well, as I'm here, it would be churlish of me not to try and lend a hand, what with my rudimentary veterinary skills gleaned over four years of doing wild at heart. I don't know what they've got on the cards for me today, but I guess there's only one way to find out, so excuse me. It's the time of year when zebra and wildebeest are gathering for their overland migration. Two million animals will travel 500 miles following the rains from Tanzania to Kenya and back. I'm out with Chief Vet Dr. Morris Kileo and we're tracking a herd of zebra to dart in order to take some blood samples. It's vital work as the zebra leave the park on the migration and can carry all sorts of diseases back into the Serengeti. As we approach the herd, Dr. Morris stops the convoy to prepare two darts containing anaesthetic. Darting animals can be extremely dangerous as it means getting out of the vehicles in a place chock full of wild cats. The zebra, have, I don't know if they know what we're up to, but they've, they've wandered off in between the trees over there. Locked and loaded, we're back on the road. Yeah, there. <laughs> they are following us. Yeah. <laughs> they are kids. Fine, we go slowly, 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 slowly. I've never seen so many in my life. The zebra always travel with wildebeest on the migration. The wildebeest can smell the rains while the zebra, with their great eyesight, act as security guards on the lookout for predators. Mm -hmm. 